If you lick your own tongue, it feels really weird. It starts to make me like question life. Like, do we have cat ridges on our tongues? You know when you see those like really sick close up photographs that like National Geographic and, and what such likes to torture us with, which is like, have you ever seen a cat's tongue under a magnifying glass? And I'm like, uh, no, thank you. I never wanted to see that. I was just like licking my own tongue. I don't know why. And now, I'm thinking about how my tongue might have ridges and I'm really freaked out. Hey everybody, it's funny and today I am going to share with you guys a lot of recent fashion finds. I did a lot of vintage shopping in Austin. I found a lot of cool stuff and it's a little bit different in my mind than thrifting because the prices are definitely up there a lot more. I kind of think of vintage shopping as someone else going to the thrift stores for you, finding all of the best pieces, putting them in one building, and then like charging you more money for that privilege as to be expected. Also, let me know if you guys want a new Uncommon Objects hurl. Uh, we were just there and I got a lot of really interesting finds this time, like this. What is this? Also, if you're here and you're new, or if you're, if you're, if you've been here before, but for some reason you've never pressed subscribe, hit that subscribe button now. I do have a goal to hit 9 million Swamp Family members by Halloween, October 31st. Are we gonna do it? Bring in the vintage! I'm my own assistant. Cute little miniature shopping cart. I bought this last year with the intention that I was gonna do like a boyfriend buys my Sephora makeup challenge and I was gonna have us just push around this little baby cart. It was really funny in my head. For some reason I procrastinated and I've never done that video, so there's that. First couple things right on the top. I went to Buffalo Exchange for the first time in years. This I'm kind of suspicious, like is it vintage or does Buffalo Exchange have some of their own labels that they carry kind of like across Buffalo Exchange stores? Because I found this shirt and I was like, oh my gosh, it's perfect. It's like a little like crop tank top, but I need it for a specific fashion video that's coming out soon. Stay tuned. It's like so soft, like the black fabric seems very worn, very thin, very vintage like, and then it's got that black and white racing pattern on the side, which you guys may know I'm obsessed with. I picked it up and I was like, oh, gotta have it. And then I looked around and I saw like four more in different sizes, like in the same Buffalo Exchange location. And I was like, well, that doesn't seem very vintage now, does it? It's kind of like when Urban Outfitters says something is vintage and yet they sell 10,000 of those pieces. Pieces. I'm like, that's not vintage, sir. I loved it and it's really comfy. It's $13. It's kind of like a longer crop because you guys know that I hate crops, which is one of the reasons why I feel like I am so into wearing vintage clothing because they used to actually sell like a whole shirt or like a whole pair of shorts, not like a strip of fabric that like barely covers the boobs and be like, yeah, it's a shirt, $30, isn't it great? I just feel like a lot of modern clothing does not speak to me. Even stores that I used to shop in all the time, I feel like everything cute is either like completely backless, which how does that even work? Like I would love to be able to wear a bra and not have a thick black bra strap going all across my back. I would love to wear a whole shirt that covers my entire body. I would love to wear a complete pair of shorts that actually tucks in my little butt cheeks and envelops them with care in some fabric. And I don't understand, like every store I go into from like Forever 21 to like Urban Outfitters to like even like anthropology and stuff, like no, no shirts, no shorts. What's going on here? I need some answers. The only other thing I got there was this crazy old, super stained, just how I like them, Return of the Jedi shirt. So it's like really dingy on the front, gotta love it. And it has this really big Return of the Jedi motif on the back. I guess I'm mostly like a Darth Vader fan. I just like the Siths. <laughs> Darth Vader is my favorite. Uh, I like Darth Maul, all the Darths. 
my favorite. This was 48 bucks, but Dogman and I are gonna share it. So it's a shirt for two. What was I gonna say? Oh, I know the biggest question that I get is like, how are you such a germaphobe, but you wear used clothing? Well, <laughs> I wash it and I don't really like wear it before I wash it. Obviously, like sometimes I try it on. I'm kind of okay with things as long as I touch them and then I don't touch like my eyes, my nose or my mouth because like that's usually where you pick up germs but also I'm gonna clue you guys in on this magic stuff which is a lifesaver if you're a germaphobe hashtag not spawns I wish I was uh because I buy so much of this stuff but it is a laundry additive that is bleach free but it's kind of like hand sanitizer for your laundry it works wonders it makes everything smell so nice so if you love thrifting and you love vintage shopping but you you hate germs and you want to kill them all buy some of that stuff I feel like it really works up next is a hefty bag from my favorite vintage store in all of Austin they are off of South Congress and they are called feathers and honestly shopping here sometimes for me is a hit or miss sometimes I go in the store and I buy everything and sometimes I'll go like two or three times and not really find anything that tickles my fancy but I got really really lucky this time so we've got a lot to look at the first thing which I realize you guys still haven't seen this video because we have to edit it still one was kind of like an all over Austin vlog and then the other one we built a fort in uncommon objects but in the one that I did a lot of vlog stuff I almost bought this shirt and so I was like oh you guys are gonna remember it but you're not gonna remember it because you haven't seen that video I wanted this so bad we actually were there in April seems like a long time ago it is a who vintage shirt the first farewell tour sounds like something I would do like just have six farewell tours be like no guys I'm really leaving now I promise I promise it's the last one somebody shredded it to bits and since it does have this long like fringe at the bottom it doesn't really seem that cropped it's a bit of a longer crop I wanted this so bad but you guys it was they took all the tags off no they just took that tag off why that was like the coolest price tag you guys they had this shirt at like 265 dollars like i was like oh i can't it's not logical i can't do it but then they had it marked down to 65 dollars so i snagged it on the sale rack so proud of myself for having some restraint and then i came back and it was a better deal another vintage shirt that i found this trip that i could not live without is the robert plant non-stop non-stop go tour I wasn't alive probably for any of these Ooh, I was barely alive um 1988 and I love Robert Plant of course I love Led Zeppelin I tried it on I loved it I liked it I didn't want to leave without it I think that this one was a little bit pricey actually not it was only 78 bucks which isn't that bad for like a really worn in vintage tea you guys know that I like live in these things so I'm okay with paying a little bit more because I know that I'm gonna like dress them up dress them down wear them while I'm editing live and sleep in them so I'm okay with it this next thing you guys are gonna yell at me for because I'm like being the quintessential I don't know who this band is but I bought the t-shirt so please don't hit me with a brick I'm gonna try and educate myself I just just really loved the feel of it and the pattern so I bought it it's a band called zebra who is that it was from the year I was born so I couldn't pass it up 1985 they were out there doing stuff what is this the break the breakout tour were they new in 1985 honestly this whole like hallway motif it reminded me of that scene in Beetlejuice you know where they're like walking down they're in that like center and there's like that hallway with all those doors and they open it up and there's like the <gasps> like the ghost things like <sighs> like just like floating the souls of those that have been exercised have you seen the movie if not you've got to watch it and if you have you know what I'm talking about I feel like this shirt was um 
more expensive than I should have paid for it. I think it was like a hundred bucks. For some reason they took the tag off of this one. I don't know why they like took some tags and left some tags. What's up with that? This one is another shirt for Dogman and I to share. I bet he's gonna wear it most of the time though because Dogman loves Snoopy and it is a very soft, very well worn in Heather Gray Snoopy shirt. It's really thin. It's like that nice like paper thin vintage feeling. Ooh, I can still see you. Can you see me? And I know this might sound silly, um, but I have been looking for pants like this everywhere. They are just really old paint splattered jeans. They've got a nice little cuff to them. These are actually like a size or two too big for me, but they looked so cool. I felt like they were one of a kind. I really loved the way the paint splattered on this particular pair. So I went for it. They were only like 58 bucks. So I thought that that was a pretty good deal. I don't know who CE Schmidt workwear is. I kind of thought that these were like Levi's or something, but they're not. They're CE Schmidt. Schmidt. <laughs> couple more pieces. What are these little fingers that I'm doing? I got these which are silk pants and they are really really high-waisted and I just felt like this was a good basic staple to have in my wardrobe. They pretty much go with anything and once again I feel like it's a really great piece to either dress up or make really casual and they're so like kind of blousey that they're pretty cool even when it's like super hot outside like it has been this weekend. Up next is a very cute pair of denim shorts. Oh, these are Levi's. Levi's. I don't know why these don't have a tag either. I feel like these were like 60 bucks, but they are cutoffs and somebody added this really cute like cuff and lace to the bottom of them and I could probably really easily do a DIY for this but do you guys ever feel like you just find something in a store that's so cute and it fits so well and you kind of fall in love with it and so you're like okay I'll just spring for it. I don't know you guys I have been swelteringly <laughs> busy lately. It's a good kind of busy. I'm so happy to be this busy but at the same time I don't have any time to be making DIY eyelet lace pants. Last piece from Feathers was this gorgeous, perfect for summer, super wow. <laughs> I didn't purposefully do that. It's like I can't talk today. Super thin, kind of like summer dress. It's like a tank dress. It is very thin, very, very breezy, very comfortable. I'm guessing that this is cotton. This might actually be homemade. There's no tag or label inside of it. I don't know how old this is, but I literally just fell in love with it when I saw it on the rack. And then I fell even more in love with it when I put it on. This was really cheap. It was, well, I don't know. Is it really cheap? I don't know what's really cheap anymore. Like I went to Urban Outfitters, that's the last thing I have to show you guys, and I swear it's like Urban Outfitters, Forever 21, like everybody like that, has like raised their prices so much that now I do feel like this kind of stuff is like at least comparable. Maybe I shouldn't say like super cheap. Um, Cause like, you know, if you go to the actual thrift store like I do all the time and then you like buy everything for $2, then this seems really expensive. But then when you like go to other like normal clothing stores, you're like, oh, this is actually not bad at all. $58. And for some reason it says as is. I have no idea why. Like I buy as is clothing all the time and I'm like, what's wrong with it though? I don't, I don't see anything wrong. Ooh, oh, I found something wrong. <gasps> Oh my gosh, this makes me love it more. You guys, it is holy. It's like falling apart. Like the whole last hem here is like ripping up. That's not an as is, that's a bonus. Some places you gotta pay more for your holes in your clothing. All right, last little bag is from Urban Outfitters and I really only shop there when I'm in Austin now. I don't know why, maybe it's because like you pay $18 to park somewhere in Austin and then you're like, okay, where is everywhere that I can possibly go and look and enjoy myself for this $18 parking fee? Uh, and so I, we just popped into Urban um, and there was actually a pair of jeans that I saw online that I was looking for there and I finally found them in my size. It's their own in-house jean brand, which is BDG. I found some pants. Some pants with 
holes in it. They fit a little bit more like relaxed, a little bit more boyfriend style. I feel like I need some new jeans. I feel like I never wear pants and I never wear jeans. And it's kind of partially because I always find them a little bit uncomfortable, but I feel like if I find ones that I really like, I don't know, maybe I'll be more prone to wear them. I kind of hate to have my legs covered with fabric. Does that sound crazy? The last piece that I bought, I had never seen before, but I fell in love with it. And it is this really oversized fit, like a very baggy fit leopard shirt. I don't know what this fabric is. Honestly, I can't tell if it's like cotton or some other kind of like material, but it's very soft. It's got like a long short aspect to it. Like the front, you can like optionally tie up to different lengths. Like if you want it more cropped or if you want more like a normal fit, but then the back is like a much longer strip of fabric, which I was like, oh my gosh, like all the throwback feels. You guys remember like 20, was it 2011 or 2012, even maybe some into 2013 when like the high low was the trend for everything like high low skirts high low shirts high low dresses it was like high low everything and now like nobody wears it anymore but i was like oh my gosh i love it i have to have it um and then i just love like leopard everything and i feel like i tried it on with those black pants and it looked like such a posh little outfit that i was like gotta buy them together that was it that's my whole little shebang and i will see you guys later i love y'all so so much and i will see y'all hopefully very soon.